Oh, sorry. Let me share my screen. Okay. So uh, this training program is essentially a sort of a refresher, I guess, for most of you. Uh, a lot of you must have heard of what uh, flow diagrams are and have, must have seen it. The reason why I'm taking this specific uh, session is also because I, uh, most of you must be aware that, you know, there are audits which are happening monthly within the organization. And, you know, as one of the audit uh, parameters is uh, design and the other is uh, the UI code also, so code hygiene. And for both, uh, our team conducts audits. So there are senior folks from our teams who are participating in these audit activities. And one of the observations specifically for design, which I have seen is that in most cases, people are uh, straight away working on uh, wireframes, either wireframes or mockups. I rarely see somebody uh, in a position where they can showcase or uh, an archive of uh, what exactly are the various uh, user journeys or user flows which are getting captured, you know, and that begs the question that what is a user flow, you know, or what are these flow diagrams, you know, what, what is the purpose of a flow diagram? So this is, uh, I'm sure at some point in time, you must have gone through it. So this is for most of you, it must be a refresher. But uh, the intention of this is very clear. And that is to kind of re-establish the necessity of having a flow diagram as part of your daily workflow. Okay. It's very important. I'll give, uh, I'll tell you why. But I think that is more important than, you know, just giving you all this gyan. So let's first uh, go through some basics of what is, uh, what, what is this flow that I'm talking about. So let's talk about uh, user flows. Okay. So to do that, first thing we need to do is understand uh, fundamentally the user. Okay. Any screen or screens that you do, these cannot be taken into isolation. Even if you are a UI designer or a UX designer, even in fact, if, if you're a UX designer, you cannot take a screen in isolation. Even if let's say you are creating a couple of screens, those screens are meant to help a specific user achieve some sort of a goal, right? So the fundamental question, whenever you are building anything, let's say you are into a fresh project or as a UI designer or a UX designer, they say, okay, this is the ticket. This is the requirement. You need to ask these fundamental questions. You know, who is the user? What is their goal? Okay. And what are the steps the user needs to take to achieve that goal? Okay. And then uh, try and establish that is what I'm doing the entire end-to-end -end process of those steps to be taken, or is it just a part of it? Okay, because a lot of times, you know, if you look at a user goal in terms of totality, let's say you are building a course. Now there are a lot of uh, factors involved in building a course, like you know, so you cannot like start and end in just one go. There'll be a lot of branching out. There'll be a lot of, uh, I would say, subclassifications. So you can break it down into smaller uh, goals also. So it need not be a larger goal. A larger goal will be an entire project, but you have to break it down into smaller goals. Normally a BA does that, okay? Or a UX architect does that. They, it'll, he or she will specifically break it down into smaller chunks and these chunks can then become story points, which you guys deal with in your uh, daily sprints. So understand the user. That's uh, a very important uh, part of it. Now, once you've understood the uh, user, uh, you need to understand why is it that, you know, a designer would want to use a user flow. Okay, so the purpose of a user flow so it's basically user flow is a method you can use to communicate your design from the perspective of the user. So whatever I've been talking about right now, 
So that's the, the most fundamental thing. You are communicating. This is the important word over here, communication. So if you are creating a user flow, the purpose is that tomorrow, if somebody challenges you, why you this screen? Why is this flow like this? Instead of trying to show those big, massive screens or wireframes and making them interact through it, you can show them a high-level flow and say, okay, okay, this is what is the blueprint of interaction. These are the ways of communication, and this is what we are building. Okay, so it's communication basically, and it's a snapshot. This is the easiest way to do uh, convey a story around what a user is supposed to do uh, as part of you know creation of your uh, uh, what do you call it? creation of whatever uh, designs or you know uh, uh, software you are uh, you are uh, developing. So this is something you guys must be all uh, acquainted with. So the typical Jira tickets, where there is a clear requirement, a certain, uh, you know, very detailed paragraphs, and, you know, there will be acceptance criteria, this, that. And typically, this is how you start off and you start creating designs. So this is where I'm saying the gap is. This is how typically a BA looks at it. But the BA can also qualify it by creating a concept if uh, they want to like specific screen but it still doesn't reveal the entire story okay so we need to now translate whatever is this requirement coming in from a business analyst and say that okay is this the story you are trying to create so what is the story so that is what you try to do with the user flow okay so there is no fixed way of doing a user flow but having said that, let's try to look at, you know, what are the different types of user flows? So like, you, know, you have task flows, you have wireframe flows, you have screen flows. These are basically a combination of, so task flows, uh, uh, let's look at it this way. Uh, a task flow is basically a set of tasks that the user has to carry out to achieve, uh, in order to achieve a certain goal. A wireframe flow and a task flow differs in that a typical task flow will be something like this. There will be blocks. Okay. There will, will be literally block diagrams. But a wireframe flow will be you take wireframes and replace them with these blocks. So they start becoming bigger in terms of a canvas size. They will be much larger. A screen flow is basically you take your mock ups, your high fidelity prototypes or your designs and replace them with the wire, uh, wireframes. So fundamentally, it uh, uh, this is something which I think everybody right now is doing uh, in their uh, Adobe XD files or whatever, where you kind of line up all the screens in one line. And if you have variations of a specific screen, then you line it up vertically. So left to right is your journey. And top to bottom is like you know the variations of the screens, right? So normally, this is how. Uh, I've seen a lot of folks do it in uh, like uh, XD or Figma or whichever tool you are using. So that becomes your screen flow. But still, screen flow is something which I think what we do is still, a, a, I would say, a non-logic based version. It's more of stacking up of a set of screens without looking into the logical aspects of it. So what I'm talking about, I'll uh, explain it uh, further. So let's start with the user goal. What is a typical user goal? So uh, how do you define it? Uh, let's. Uh, so for the purpose of today's uh, session, I'm going to define a user flow. This is hypothetical. Let's take a real world scenario and say that okay, let's build this. Uh, let's look at this goal and try to build a flow around it. So what is the goal? So let's say. Uh, as a new user, I want to sign up and access a streaming service. Could be anything, Netflix, uh, Hotstar, whatever it is. Okay. So two key things over here. One is new user and sign up. New user, so that's your persona. So your user goal should identify these two key attributes. Who's my user? Or rather, what is the persona? Uh, and what is the goal of that user? So here the you, new user could be any user, anybody who wants to consume uh, streaming content, video content. That's your new user. What are the 
uh, what is the goal of that user? The user wants to sign up to that service. Okay, so uh, this is how you define. So when you are creating a certain flow, uh, when you are creating a certain flow, and somebody asks you, "Ki tu kar kya rahe? Like you know, what is the screen supposed to achieve? Your answer should be as concise uh, as this one. This in itself can, in a very one line, simple uh, terms, explain to the user uh, or explain to any of the stakeholders, be it your project manager, be it uh, whoever it is, he, what is it that uh, you are doing? What are the screens you are creating? Right. So uh, make it a, pra a practice to kind of memorize your user goal every time you are working on any ticket or any task. So that you know you have a internal clarity as to what is it that I'm trying to do over here, and whose problem I'm trying to solve. Okay. So as I said earlier, task flows is a series of steps your user takes to achieve a specific goal. So like it, it's very clinical. Like you know, uh, let's say for example. So if you talk about something like this, so a new user wants to sign up. So the task flow for the user will be okay. First thing you do is arrive on the, let's say, landing page of a specific service like a Netflix or a Hotstar or a Z5 or a Sony Live. You know, you land on their home screen. Next thing you do is you go to the login screen. Then you go to the registration page. Then you make your registration. And once you have successfully registered, you uh, log in, uh, get logged in as a registered user. So that is your broader task flow, right? So. The best way I would suggest, like, you know, for, which I have been using over the years is basically taking a pen and paper and you know, literally working it out. Don't waste time trying to learn the tools, rather learn the activity it is my uh, very humble request to all of you. Okay. And this is something which anybody can do. Even our developers can do. At the end of the day, if you look at it, if you are working on the front end aspect of it you need to understand the mechanics of it right you need to understand he in one specific screen what are the different things which are possible what is what are what is the core functionality what are the features how are these features influencing what you can do in a specific page so all that you know you can actually start uh, imagining you can simply draw it on a piece of paper if you have to okay if not the then there are tools so uh like a lot of our architects use something like miro but there are a lot of free tools also available for creating flow diagrams so you can use any of the tools uh out there uh and you know uh, create it you can even create it in xd you can standardize the set of templates like you know these boxes and circles and stuff all you have to do is drag and kind of you know start typing in text you can do it in xd also uh, not an issue uh, on that one. So, in totality, if you look at it, you know this is basically the evolution. Uh, I found this chart uh, very well put. Uh, the I found it online. So, you start with the user goal, which is a very specific activity that the user wants to do, so that so as to achieve a specific result. Then you identify the set of tasks or actions the user has to take. So that becomes your task flow after that is open to interpretation but my i'll give you my uh, variation of it what i do and then uh, you if you want you can elaborate it like this also so you have the wire flow what wire flow does is literally sequences it out and those tasks are mapped out to a ui so let's say if i'm saying that you know you have to suppose uh, come to the landing page so landing page, you'll just create a wireframe for that. Then you'll say, okay, from there you go to the login page. So login page will create a wireframe for that. And then you'll go to the, let's say, registration page. Then you create a registration page for screen. So you're specifically going screen, 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 screen. And you're doing it with a wireframe, not actual uh, design. So And you show those relationships also. If you see over here, these are the relationships. Like you click over here, the screen comes. You click over here, the screen comes, so on. Then comes user flow. In user flow, see, this is where user flow is complex because it considers all possible actions of the user. 
Okay, keep this in mind. All possible actions, which means, let's say I'm coming from this screen to, let's say, this screen, from screen one to screen two. But in doing so, there are chances that there might be a variation. What if, like, for example, what if I want to register, but my email ID is not valid? What if I want to register, but I have entered wrong information? What if I want to register, but I am already registered? Every time the screen is, is going to respond in a different way. So you see that that screen one to screen two, which was simply the two achievable tasks which you had identified, now become variations. So here you start seeing that same screen card, there will be multiple variations. If I am successful, I'll reach here. If I fail, then I reach here. And this is how you start uh, building on a lot of things. Okay. I'll uh, show you some examples also. Well, uh, as I said, you know, that previous example which we had taken, uh, let's uh, actually start building one. Okay, so this is like just to kind of demonstrate. So to do that, first let's understand what are what is a flow diagram? Like, you know, what are these boxes and squares and parallelograms and arrows and whatever? <coughs> so there is more there, uh, but technically, functionally, all you need are these uh symbols that's more than enough okay every uh, uh flow has a start point and an end point you could have multiple end points also by the way okay and you can have multiple start points also but it all depends so but traditionally you have one start point and one end point so they are represented by these kind of uh, capsules okay you can even use circles there is no hard and fast rule uh there are a lot of variations, uh, so to speak. Some people use colors also. Uh, so, you know, you, there are various ways which, in which you, you can do it as long as it makes the life of the person who's trying to read it easy, go ahead and make your variations. That's okay. Uh, if there is input or output, so what does that mean? So let's say I'm uh, feeding in something like, uh, if there is a form and I'm supposed to add in data, so just to showcase that, you can actually use uh, this. Or let's say if there is an error, I'm in the login page, I sign in, uh, you add in my username and password, and the password throws an error. How do I show it in the diagram? So you can actually show, show it as a, like, you know, from the box, you can just uh, put an arrow outside and uh, add a parallelogram, and then mentioned over here, uh, error alert. So it indicates that, oh, OK, on, I'm still on the screen, but there is an error which has happened. And you can then elaborate if you want to. Process basically means every block or other off step that you're taking. And then there are decision points. Like if you're adding your login in, login ID and password, then the decision point is, is the password correct? If yes, then you go this side. If no, then you go that side. You know, that kind of a thing. This is conditional. So this does not translate into screen. This translates into action. Uh, at this point, I'll just uh, take a pause and uh, check with everybody if uh, I hope I'm not boring anybody. Is it still interesting? Yeah, definitely. Yes, yes. 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 Okay. yes. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, glad to know that. So, uh, take it. so I'll continue. OK, we'll have a uh, Q&A round. Uh, I'll try to finish this off early so that uh, we can then actually have a discussion also. Uh, let's go back to how do I start from this page? No, 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 no. 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 So, <clears throat> We were here. So what we are, again, uh, the previously when I was explaining the user goal, we'll take that same example and we'll actually build a, uh, a flow diagram. OK, so the objective, as I said, is that a new user wants to sign up and access a streaming service. OK, uh, at this point, I'll just move to Miro and Let's go to this screen. OK. So what I'm doing is I'm using this tool, uh, Miro, which uh, 
in which I think uh, a few of you already must have worked on Miro, so know what this is. It's a collaboration tool. And uh, so what I've done is in this canvas, I am identifying my goal, which is a new user as a, uh, I want to sign up for a streaming service, kind of highlighting things also. I mean, you can, uh, like, you know, you can probably put a post-it note and uh, actually add, like, you know, the user uh, is, uh, let's say, of the age group of maybe, let's say, 18 to 35. OK, just hypothetically. Why is it important? Maybe because you want to know, or you know, somebody might say that, hey, uh, I have an entire user profile, then you can actually start creating a persona document. So as separately, so you know, key, uh, what, what, what is the, I would say, technical proficiency of the user? Does the user understand certain, uh, you know, certain uh, words of communication? What is a sign up? What, what is registration? What is OTP? Or you might want to say that, you, you, somebody might say that, you know, this whole process, maybe you want to say, okay, okay, let me add another one and say, this is going to be multilingual. So this is for your own reference. So you can do all these kind of referencing also. That, okay, what I'm creating is for, let's say, multiple languages. So you can identify those all. So that you, you, you keep in mind that when you are developing the UI, uh, uh, language centric, you know, those, uh, label, uh, uh, changes can be accommodated. Uh, those kind of stuff, like more specifically, like if you're going for something like uh, Arabic or Urdu, or maybe some languages where the, uh, conversion of, you know, English to Hindi or English to some other language makes the character strings very long. And how do you accommodate that? You know, those kind of stuff. Okay. So this is how we start. So fundamentally, let's first start with my basic task loop. So I'm saying that the user lands on the streaming service for the first time. So he or she comes on the landing page. Then the user accesses the login screen. Then the user goes for registration. And once the user is registered, the user can access the site as a registered user. Plain and simple, this is the very, well, there are 10,000 feet high bird's eye view. Now we will go a little lower, go to detail. Mein okay, you want to do this. There are variations possible. You might say that, you know, maybe the user doesn't want to go from the landing page, but that's not uh, important at this point, because this is just this, as you remember, uh, one second, let me just change. If you remember, these, these are start and end points. So it doesn't matter if my start point can be coming in from, let's say, I went to a, a Sony Live website, I was browsing, I went to the content page, maybe a movie landing page, and now I want to watch the movie, and the site is asking me to log in. So it could be that, you know, I'm, it's not the landing page, it could be any content page. So forget, forget all that, because that's just the start point. I'm interested in the flow. Which is, and this is my goal. Goal is to get the user registered. So never forget your core objective, which is to register the user. Okay. Always keep that in mind. Rest of it are just mechanics of, you know, trying to reach there. So now let us slightly go in depth. So here, what we do is, okay. User comes to the landing page, user accesses the login screen. Now, in the login screen, let's say the business case is that, you know, the product owner or the business analyst will say, you can log in using your uh, social credentials like your Facebook, Twitter, uh, or Apple ID or Google ID, something like that. Or you can log in using, let's say, your email ID, or you can log in, let's say, with using mobile number. Okay, or if you are not a user, you can register with us. So what this shows is that currently on the website, your registration play, uh, screen is actually inside your login screen. 
this is a very common trend nowadays if you look at it earlier back in the day your login page and registration the buttons used to be very specifically outside separate nowadays they don't do that they have merged it so they say ki just uh, uh, they start with the login and then oh that they give you an option to register if you want to and uh, uh, they have also done this is because of the third party login kind of a data where you know if you are using your social media id then even if you are not logged in automatically from the back end they'll ensure that you know you become a registered user and take you in so like don't make the user commit an error the user is interested in achieving a goal the goal is to get themselves registered why am i making the user run around right so that's the whole idea so that's why if you see the registration page is inside the login page so here what i'm identifying is hey uh this is a slightly more elaborated view so if you compare it with the previous one your registration is actually part of this process so, there, so these are the different mechanics of logging in so why is it important because now if we go further you will realize that while you are registering it go for registration now the site is saying why don't you register with third party access or your mobile number interestingly they are dropping email id yeah this is a hypothetical scenario guys so just uh, so uh, why am i doing that let's say the site initially started off and was taking email ids but then realize that you know email pe to koi kuch newsletter bhejo kuch bhi bhejo fayda nahi hai nobody reads but agar aap uh, mobile se register karte ho you can send an sms you can send if the user has whatsapp you can send a whatsapp message there are ways to communicate immediately you can send it uh, like you know if they have done a payment or if there's something is a subscription is supposed to expire or something like that so you you can actually um uh just just give me a second give me a second guys So, okay. so just by looking at this, there is a story which is coming out. It's like, why is it that there is an email over here, but I don't see an email here? Well, th that's because now the site doesn't want this. Maybe they are going to retire the option to uh, have email ID. i'm just building the story up just to make it interesting for you guys huh? but the idea is that i'm not looking at any screens just by looking at the uh, this user flow i am able to derive what what is it that the login and registration process contains okay now again let's further deep dive go even further in detail and if you see uh I don't know what color this this is. Sea green maybe. So if or the sky blue, whatever it is. So this is the area of focus. This is not because our focus is registration ka flow, not the other flows. So any other offshoots, I'm just changing it by color. So this is again, this is customization. You can do it. Another way of customization is like I have put a thicker line so that my focus of attention is like okay, these are the flows. which are of our interest the rest of them are just there for support and as we go in further you start realizing there will be more of such bifurcations so now again user lands login flow gets into registration in registration you have third party access and mobile number right you see over here third party access and mobile number now just for today's discussion i am not getting into the third party access this is very straightforward basically what happens is when you do a facebook login a pop up appears and in that pop up basically the screen that comes in is coming from facebook so you have lost complete control as a service now you will be waiting for facebook to make the confirmation that yes this is a registered user with me and in the back end they'll pass the information that this is the uh, credentials of so and so person who wants to log into your service and yes he is authorized फेसबुक यूजर वो पूरा बैक एंड से होता है एक पॉपअप में फ्रंट एंड पे एक पॉपअप दिखता है एंड द मोमेंट द पॉपअप में द लॉग इन इज सक्सेसफुल 
the pop-up disappears and you will see that in your page you will be traced to so that's the mechanics of it okay so uh, it's pretty straightforward so i'm not getting into this uh, let's focus on the mobile number a simple thing like mobile number you want to register using your mobile number so let's deep dive into that so when you want to register with a mobile number the first thing is when you're trying to add the number so there are two parameters now which are being asked for one is your country code and one other is the mobile number why country code because let's say it's a netflix netflix is all over the world so they would want the user's country code okay and uh, uh, if it was a uh, india based then probably country code would just uh, you know you can pass it off but uh, in this case you have country code and i'm saying set as default which means if i'm accessing it uh, the user is accessing it from india i'll put 91 automatically so the user doesn't have to fill it up okay and uh, you can add your mobile number now this is where it becomes interesting once i add my mobile number there is a uh, confirmation over here asking whether it's a 10 digit code that i have added okay if the answer is yes and if the country code is also set whatever it is supposed to be if both of them are valid then you move ahead let's say i add nine digits instead of 10 digits so throw an error and take the user back to add the mobile number so this is actually just an activity if you notice i'm still on the same page we are not screens so don't confuse this with screens these are activities or actions that we are taking very specifically so if my mobile number is correct okay uh, the next thing is uh, what is going to happen is you will be asked for an otp so here i can just set that you know otp flow let's this so what happens is basically uh, you will be se uh, sent an otp and there is a timer for 30 seconds okay within if the th uh, timer of 30 seconds is not up which is uh, it 30 seconds are still valid then you are asked to add the otp into a text box or if you have not received those otp then you can ask for resending the otp so you have two options okay but if 30 seconds get over then i'll be again uh, sent back and the counter will restart which means another otp will be sent now you might ask this question ki iska ui ke sath kya lena dena the answer to that is that probably will result in a variation a small variation in the screen where you have an option to uh, let's say if timer 30 seconds ho jata hai then uh, you are going to disable the add otp otp color and maybe just switch to resend otp so there are times when people just say uh, try to you know uh, log in and fir baith jate hain bhool jate hain ya they just uh, close the screen so you cannot go into a loop right you are hoping that you know uh, the user is going to send an otp the user is going to send an otp so you what you do is you block the flow and ask the user to explicitly uh, press on resend the otp and if he uh, yeah, does yes you can say yes new user request like this to wapas se timer shuru ho jayega to jab tak agar usne resend nahi dabaya to naya request nahi aayega then it will just stop and there will be only an option to resend the otp ab aap samjhe aap same screen ka abhi do variations aa gaye and if the otp is valid then you will uh, land up on the welcome screen and from welcome screen then you can take the user to the final destination which is user uh, now you have you have a registered user okay and if the otp is invalid you can throw an error message and take them back to the previous screen which is the mobile registration screen 
तो नाउ इफ यू लुक एट दिस फ्लो यू रियलाइज की अ सिंपल मैकेनिक्स ऑफ मोबाइल नंबर बेस्ड रजिस्ट्रेशन हैज सो मेनी इन सो मच ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन now you might say that you know this has nothing to do with ui design because technically speaking isme kitne screens hain there's just probably two screens right but if you look at this it will give you offers you the entire mechanics of how within screen how many variations can be happening mera screen mein kya kya changes aa sakte hain i am not saying that you are supposed to do all this detail i am saying at a high level even if you do this that's more than enough and then you can actually replace them these screens with as i showed you earlier you can replace them with actual uh, screen flows like this and that makes it a user flow diagram so you basically what you have done you started off with if you remember you started off with a task flow but as you started to detail it out this task flow converted into user flow now it makes sense so this is essentially uh what i wanted you guys to understand and the best thing you can do going forward is whatever activity you are doing these are the two things you need to take care of one is understand what is your users goal try to identify that in as simple terms one liner as possible and then try and build a story around it use a pen pen and paper don't waste time trying to use tools because that kind of becomes a uh, demotivator just use simple flow start with the user goal try to find out what are the tasks and there is no right or wrong answer see like somebody might say ki yaar tune itna detail mein nahi kiya to ekdam basic flow bata raha let's say like something like this that is fine i in if you if this is good enough for you to make the argument that okay what i need kitne screens banane hain and usme logic hai fair enough but as, as you start digging in you will start re realizing ki okay mere lo, in my login screen i am having these four uh, activities which are possible so this is basically just a login page this is one page right this is the login page and in the login page i have these four actionables each actionable will be in itself a different flow so now what are those flow so that you can further detail it out so maine usme registration ka page liya so now from here if this is my login page now i am into the registration page so registration page now has got these two तो ये आपका रजिस्ट्रेशन पेज हो गया उसमें आप जब मोबाइल नंबर डालते हो यू हैव अ चॉइस टू फिगर आउट वेदर दिस एंटायर सीक्वेंस ये जो सारा सीक्वेंस है यहाँ का ये मेरा सेम रजिस्ट्रेशन पेज के अंदर आएगा कि मोबाइल नंबर के लिए मुझे एक सेपरेट पेज बनाना पड़ेगा ओके बिकॉज देर इज एन ओ टी पी रिमेंबर दैट so you your either your page is dynamic which means that that same page may a small micro jisko hum log micro interactions bolte hain a small area might change like you know you add mobile number and maybe that itself can flip add mobile number and convert into a text box and say that okay add the otp over here only or you might say that okay i'll take the user to the next screen wo otp screen hoga and in that otp screen i'll do all this flow ye pura jugglery otp screen mein hoga so now you have the login page you have the registration page and for mobile you have the otp page so three screens ho gaye and wo three screens ke andar ke ye jo third page hai ye iska itna sara variation hai so this is how you kind of start fixing uh, figuring out how many pages are to be derived over a period of time you will become kind of you know acquainted with this and all this jugglery you can do in your head also but till then even if you can i would still suggest that in at least some level of some degree of wireframing or other user flow diagrams you should create it helps normally itna jo detail mein karne ka kaam jo hota hai wo mostly ba karta hai elaboration ka 
तो आपको उतना उसमें डीप डाइव करने का शायद जरूरत नहीं पड़ेगा यू मे नॉट वॉन्ट टू पुट ऑल पॉसिबल लॉजिक बट या इफ देर इज नो हार्म लाइक यू नो समिंग लाइक दिस की अगर थर्टी सेकेंड्स के अंदर अगर नहीं होता है तो वो यू आर सपोज टू डी एक्टिवेट दो टी पी का टेक्स फील्ड समथिंग लाइक दैट और मे बी दैट स्क्रीन चेंजेस एंड यू नो देर इज ओनली वन बटन विच से रिसेंट दी ओ टी पी तो दैट बिहेवियर क्यों हो रहा है वो समझने के लिए इट डेफिनेटली हेल्प एंड एट सम पॉइंट वॉट यू कैन डू इज लिटरली टेक दीज काइंड ऑफ डायग्राम्स एंड स्टार्ट रिप्लेसिंग दैक्चुअल वायर फिच सो दिस बिकम्स लाइक द इंक्रीमेंटल स्टेप सो इफ यू लुक एट योर एंटायर डॉक्यूमेंटेशन देन यू कैन मे बी ओवर हेयर यू कैन स्टार्ट बिल्डिंग योर वायर फ्रेम्स एंड देन आफ्टर दैट यू कैन स्टार्ट क्रिएटिंग दचुअल मॉकअप्स so once so when are you when at the end of it all somebody is revisiting your content or other your uh, archive of what you have done i don't have to go through the wireframes or mockups i can simply go through this screen and understand okay what is it that uh, you tried to achieve so with that i will uh conclude this session we have 15 minutes so let's do some q and a i am open to questions coming in from you guys uh feel ask questions if you have hello Are you guys there? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. अरे कुछ तो बोलो यार मतलब अरे समझता हूँ ताली नहीं बजा सकते बट ठीक है सो या एनी क्वेश्चन हेलो विनोद हेलो यस सर क्या हो गया फिर कोई सवाल नहीं तेरे पास सब समझ गया तू नहीं मेरे को सर सर्दी हो रही है इसलिए थोड़ा खुलने को प्रॉब्लम हो रहा है तो टाइप कर ले क्वेश्चन किसी ने तो टाइप किया है शायद अच्छा ड्रॉपिंग ऑफ का टाइप किया ओके सो शुड आई अज्यूम दैट एवरीबॉडी इज ओके विद दिस यस सर no oh, so the uh, uh, what do you call the lnd team also records uh, every training session so that in future if somebody wants to revisit it they can do that mm-hmm. yeah yeah sure thanks thanks yeah. so uh, i think in conclusion since nobody has any questions i'll only say one thing is that you know i there are uh, at least one of two things i expect any time next time when people are asked it तुम अभी क्या कर रहे हो करके ओके एंड नॉट टू मी बट एनीबडी हु आस्क द क्वेश्चन वन इज द एबिलिटी टू आंसर इट इन सिंपल वर्ड सिंगल वन वर्ड चाहिए तो वन सेंटेंस सॉरी इज बेसिकली ट्रांसलेटिंग व्हाट इज अ यूजर गोल इनटू अ कम्युनिकेटेड वन लाइनर ट्राई एंड प्रैक्टिस दैट इट टेक्स टाइम बट वंस यू नो दैट इट बिकम्स मच ईजियर टू कम्युनिकेट बिकॉज इट्स वेरी क्लियरली आर्टिकुलेटिंग कि कौन मेरा क्या कौन से यूजर के लिए उसके क्या गोल को अचीव करने के लिए मैं काम कर रहा हूँ एज सिंपल एज दैट एंड सेकंड इज ट्राई एंड स्पेंड टाइम दिस टेक्स नॉट मोर देन टेन टू फिफ्टीन टू ट्वेंटी मिनट्स टू बिल्ड इट्स अ सच अ सिंपल एंड पावरफुल टूल दस पंद्रह मिनट लगते हैं पेन पेपर लेके करो चाहिए तो व्हाइट बोर्ड पर करो अगर ऑफिस में हो तो यू कैन टेक अ स्नैप ऑफ इट and use it as a digital reference if you want but once you do that 
you will be having a clarity of thought in terms of what are the screens you are supposed to make and what are the variations you are supposed to make. Got it? So, Hemant, uh, if it is a part of the process that you know, we are looking at, then the, do you think that also needs a review round and an approval on the flow? No, so uh, think about it this way. Unfortunately, not uh, I haven't seen people use this in the organization. Okay, let's be frank. Yeah. I don't think there'll be an approval round. And uh, intention is not to create approval rounds or anything. Intention is to create a, a, a clarity of thought, so to speak, while you are building something. Okay. A uh, lot of times right now, what we are observing is people straight away working in Adobe XG. I, I don't want that to become the norm. I artifacts not want anything else to see. Wireframes are made and then mock-ups are made. But the, if you look at it from a very large project perspective, it becomes next to impossible to understand. Let's say you have an end-to-end -end project in which there are 50 or 60 screens. You show a big XD file. That person is going to be like, oh shit, what am I supposed to do? But that 50, 60 screens can be easily translated into this kind of a flow in which it will clearly identify, okay, what is it that we are doing here? You got my point? Without actually having to uh, show any screens, the purpose of what I demonstrated was to tell you uh, that you can actually talk about a user interface without actually creating a user interface. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So we haven't seen any UI screen, right? But we were talking about a UI screen. We were talking about the interactions. So this is what I'm saying. This is what you guys are missing. So try and do that. It's a 10, 15 minute task, maybe half an hour if you if you're starting. Spend time. You don't have to go for approval from anybody. This is, do it for yourself. You'll have a better clarity in terms of what you want to do. Okay? okay? Yeah. All right. So if uh, that's all, then I think let's close this. One final question uh, again is, does anybody else have any question? Hello. Thanks a lot, guys, for joining in. Uh, appreciate your uh, and I hope you like the session and if there are any other specific sessions you guys want me to take please drop in a mail uh, with the specific uh, request either I or any of our senior members will then I'll ensure that you know they take up a session for you is it a tool soil so basically directly you can just click on click on add things. Right. Yeah, there are hazard tools. Yeah. In fact, uh, there are a lot of free tools also available. Point is that again, as I said, you know, don't get caught up in the tools. Just you drag and drop. Hmm. And just add the data of the flow. Right, right, right. Uh, otherwise, uh, another request would be, let's say, when you you are working on something, you can always request Rupali to create a Miro board for you. And you can create a whole documentation. Kar sakte ho. If anybody over here wants access to a Miro file, I, uh, generally Miro licenses are only for architects and senior members. So if but still, you guys can get it. I can give you a guest access. I can create a file. And you guys can uh, use it for your projects. So fe feel free to connect with me for that if you want to. Okay? Yes. All right. All right. Sure. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Happy weekend. Thank you. Yeah, all of you. Bye.